Yeah. Ronin strong as our weakest. Stop! Stop! Press go out to all 12 tribes. Tell the truth, I'm cold hearted. Freeze up the pools at pool parties. They underestimate me and then they try to educate me. You point the finger, but you never lift a helping hand. I'm in the trenches with the blueprint. You just Uncle Sam. Cooning and losing, losing and cooning. I tell my sisters to be modest, but some just want to spread their legs. Too many baby daddies, not enough married men. We need to do better to shoot better. If the shoe fits you, then it's you, nigga. Mama, don't cry, Lord's will, we see them better days And all them pills you have to take cause of your pains and for your sleep For you to get up and do it all again Eric's Yeah The Lord knows Eric's Alright, feel me on this one, brothers Check it Yeah uh, since I'm a prophet, there's a target on my back And when my name is mentioned, not the devil's mouth I'm being attacked And when the brother becomes a traitor And betrays, it's like being stabbed Watch me slight Nina and Jack Yeah, yeah. Watch me slight Nina and Jack uh, Let's go a little bit harder uh, uh, uh. You can tell them different Got a hawk ambition, car crash got me feeling like there's something missing. Chastisement of the Lord got me moving different. I'ma tell you like it is, they gon' Reggie Bush it. Singing hymns, speaking oracles in our sanctuaries. The things you're witnessing right now are gonna be legendary. I just wanna live forever before I meet the cemetery. I have nothing to give, so all I am, I give my all to you. Yeah. Things I need to say, I just gotta get it off my mind. Stop looking back on my failures and stop listening to my enemies. I can tell there's nothing that they can tell us. Our hood's getting gentrified, but Christ coming back for them souls. Watch when he dent that sky and some unidentified object. We off them projects, taking high up in them clouds. Yes, you feeling fly yet? That's a little deep. Zion is the light on the hill. Yeah, that's a little steep. The word is abundant with waters. Esau, a little creek. Damn, no Jake left behind. The spirit's reaching back. So my squad, all in them trenches, right where the people at. We living where the evil at. The Bible prophesied the Israelites are being mistreated at wherever that eagle at. Till time in that word in our hand. The precious diamonds plus the right hand. Even the heathen knowing who I am. Meaning they knowing that if you stay true to this, it ends for them. But God says, that you could get a future full of rulership Things I need to say I just gotta get it off my mind They don't wanna move away I gotta tell the truth to you oh, oh. You can be the only one to tell the truth to you We just don't lead our past. Yeah, we left them on the car waiting to get picked up. Every time we swing around that block, they be like, What's up? Damn, there's no luck. In this truth, brothers make it hard to repent. Anybody get close, you gotta put up the fence. I ain't talking about no zone, I'm talking no lot bliss. This is tears of a clown, and this and no lot this. Cut your grass, cause them snakes be crawling. When I see one, I may be brawling. On the other hand, I may be stolen. Stay giving them a chance by holding.
probably not my right hand. You used to be my main man. Damn. By holding out my right hand, you used to be my main man. Damn. Yeah. Huh. Jail bound at an early age. While most kids was getting fitted for them shoes, I was getting fitted for that lonely cage. The place where they try to control your rage. Ain't no good in there. And I'm still searching for that walking sage. I couldn't find it. I couldn't see it. Had a Bible in my hand, but I couldn't read it. The breath of fight was under my nose, but I couldn't breathe it. The Lord calling from my mind, but I couldn't give it. Sin is a drug, and like MJ, I beat it. When Christ on my side versus demons, I'm defeated. My DNA full of chromosomes that makes me great. And when it comes to truth, I bleed it. Things I need to say, yeah. I just gotta get it.
Shalom, family. Most high in Christ, bless. Most high in Christ, bless. Also got Liar, IUIC, Jackson, Mississippi. Can you all see me? Can you all hear me? Can you see me? Can you hear me? All praises to the Most High. Let me know. Thumbs up. Yes. Can you hear me? Can you see me? All praises to the Most High. All praises, all praises, all praises. All praise to the Most High. You can, okay. All praise to the Most High. All praise. All right. As long as you all can see me, as long as you all can hear me, we're going to get ready to get started. Um, we're going to go ahead and send up prayers. And then, um, yeah, we're going to get started, okay? Um. It's, uh, sisters, make sure your head covered. Brother, make sure your head uncovered. All right? <laughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debt to us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Lord God, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ's uh, bloodshed, that we may have a chance at eternal life, Lord. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit down to enter into us in these last days, that we may understand thy word and continue to teach thy word to thy people, Lord God. Lord, we ask that you continue to allow us to be an example to our, our brothers and sisters that are without. Lord, we also ask that you have uh, uh, mercy on the souls of our brothers and sisters that we've lost during the Feast of Tabernacles and throughout this year in general, Lord. Be with the sick amongst us, Lord God. Heal them quickly and speedily, Lord God. Heal those that have broken spirits and contrite spirits. Heal them as well, Lord God. Also, Lord, if it be your will, continue to bring swift destruction upon our enemies and all those that hate us, Lord God, for their folly and for their wickedness. And for all these things that they try to do unto us, Lord, to stop your truth, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay. 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 All praises. All praises to the Most High. Okay. Shalom, family. Most High in Christ. Bless. I also get a liar, IUIC Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, if I could, could I please get a brother to subscribe for me? A uh, soldier, preferably, or above. But if there's no soldiers or above online, then maybe maybe I can get a brother to subscribe for me. A diligent brother to subscribe for me. Let's set my phone up on this. Y'all give me a second. All right, all 
praises. All praises to the Most High. So yeah, if I could, that'd be great. If I can get a brother to scribe, that'd be excellent. I'm about to set my phone up right here. Bear with me, y'all. Got this OBS running so we can do a little more today. I'll take my phone. If I can get a brother to scribe, that'd be excellent. We can go ahead and get started. If I can get a brother to scribe for me, that'd be excellent. We can go ahead and get started. All praise to the Most High. All praises. Philemon, thank you, bro. All praise to the Most High. All right, so we're going to go ahead and jump into the class. Uh, today's class is uh, called uh, Stay in the Spirit. Uh, it is the season. I think it is the season. I think that's what I said. Let me see. Let me look at it again. Oh, stay strong, tis the season, right? Stay strong, tis the season. And a lot of our brothers and sisters in the truth are new to the truth. And this is their first year being with us. This is their first year following the commandments and understanding why we do what we do, why we uh, teach what we teach. And they're gonna have uh, uh, they're gonna have um, brothers and sisters in the world pulling on them. They have their mother pulling on them around Mother's Day. They got their uh, family pulling on them around Thanksgiving, Halloween, Fourth um, of July, Christmas, all these things. Okay. So we will go in the Bible today and show you why we don't celebrate. I'm going to try to get through them all. Why we don't celebrate Halloween. Why we don't celebrate Thanksgiving. Why we don't celebrate Christmas. Because it's that season. You can already feel it. It's starting to get a little cool in the air. You're starting to see the pumpkin patches and all these different things around. Uh, you're starting to see um, uh, people starting to get their Christmas lights together. Even in a pandemic, man. This, this, this so-called white man, Esau, he's still going to make his money. He's still going to push his paganism. Right? So we got to counteract that with the scriptures, all right? So that's why I named the class Stay Strong, Tis the Season. Because this is the season uh, where our people start wanting to be around each other, want to go out and buy Christmas gifts. But we got holidays that the Lord set up during this season, like the Feast of Dedication, the New Moon, of course. Uh, we just got done with Tabernacle. So these are all holidays that we have that we don't have to celebrate the so-called white man's holidays, okay? So um, we're going to start off in the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 8. Okay, the book of Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8, all right? So it says, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So let's deal with the first holiday, right? The first holiday. Um, the first holiday that's coming up, I believe, is going to be Halloween, right? And that's a holiday that our people, a holiday that our people have been celebrating for a very long time. I think a lot of our people are starting to wake up that it's, that it's demonic. But some of our people may still uh, not realize exactly what they're doing. You know, they'll say things like, oh, it's for the kids or it's for this or for that. Not understanding that it's actually a pagan holiday. And I actually got the, the uh, article right here. I'm going to pull it up for you guys so you can see the origin of Halloween. You can go back and watch Bishop's class um, that he's done, that he did, <coughs> the truth show, Make You Free, where he also went into the origin of Halloween. I just wanted to touch on it briefly today because, like I said, I know we got a lot of new brothers and sisters. So, um, can you brothers and sisters see my screen? Just want to make sure that it's working. Let me know if you brothers and sisters can see my screen. Just a yes, a quick yes or no. Um would suffice can you see my screen yes okay brother say you can see my screen got it all praises all praises so this is the origin of halloween we're gonna read right here um it says halloween is a holiday celebrated each year on october 31st and halloween 2020 will occur on saturday october 31st the tradition originated with the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain. Samhain, right? Uh, when people would light bonfires and wear costumes to ward off ghosts. In the 8th century, Pope Gregory III, Pope Gregory III, Pope Gregory III, designated November 1st as the time to honor all saints. So they would call it soon, call it All Saints Day. Incorporated some of the traditions of Samhain. The evening before was known as All Hallows Eve and later became Halloween or the Eve of um, Fall, I believe, or the Eve of Winter, one of them. 
Uh, over time, Halloween evolved into a day of activities like trick-or-treating, carving jack-o'-lanterns, festival gatherings, donning costumes, and eating treats. All right? Uh, ancient origins of Halloween. So this is a good article, actually. Halloween, originates date, Halloween origins date back to the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain, pronounced so, so in. Uh, the Celts, who lived 2,000 years ago, mostly in the area that is now Ireland and United Kingdom and northern France, so Edomites, celebrated their new year on November 1st. This day marked the end of summer and the harvest and the beginning of the dark, cold winter, a time of year that was often associated with human death. Celts believed that on the night before the new year, the boundary between the worlds of the living and the dead became blurred. On the night of October 31st, they celebrated Samhain when it was believed that the ghost of the dead returned to the earth. So let me pull back myself back up real quick so I could just kind of just deal with this. Um, so as you can see, the origin of Halloween has nothing to do with um, just trick-or-treating. Um, the origin of Halloween was them celebrating the transition from one season to another, okay? And it was done in the name of Sam Hain, right? Um, I don't have my book. I had a book called The Origin of Pagan Days. Um, but let's look at Sam Hain real quick, if I may. Um, let's pull this up. Give me a second. Okay. All right, so let's look at Sam Hain for a second, right? So Sam Hain, uh, let's see if you guys can see that. Okay, Sam Hain is a Gaelic festival marking the end of the harvest season in the beginning and the beginning of winter or the darker half of the year. Traditionally it's separated celebrated from October thirty first to November first as the Celtic day began and ended at sunset. Um this is the boundary between the autumn equinox and the winter solstice. So Esau believed that somehow a, a, a mystical realm or a realm of, of worlds would be opened during this particular time. So they would have celebration of Sam Hain, which is basically uh, the same thing as um, All Saints Day. And then in Mexico, um, I forgot what they call it. Give me a second, let me look it up real quick, just to make sure I'm on point. Um, Mexican, let me look up Mexican Halloween. Cause see, Northern Kingdom was keeping this too, right? Northern Kingdom was keeping this too. Um, Bear with me one second, just popped off my screen. Okay. Uh, day of the Dead is what the Mexicans, what Issachar would call it. So Issachar would call it the Day of the Dead. Let me actually look it up for you guys so you all can see it. Um, let's see if y'all can see my screen. Okay. So, yeah. So we got um, the Day of the Dead. All right. All right. Dea de los Muertos. Muertos? I think the Day of the Dead is a Mexican holiday where families welcome back the souls of their deceased relatives for a brief reunion that includes food, drink, and celebration. So they'll put it some in some instances they'll they'll uh, take up these dead bodies and have the dead body of their ancestor out of the grave just sitting there. You understand why they feeding it, drinking it, <laughs> celebrate with? It. I mean, just crazy. In, in Israel, we were not doing this on this side of the earth. Okay, when we were. When we was keeping the commandments on the other side of the earth, we were not doing it. All Souls Day, Day of the Dead, all these things, right? Uh, it's a blend of Mesoamerican ritual, European religion, and Spanish culture. So all these things are a conglomerate of, of different uh, religions and so on and so forth. The origins of the Day of the Dead, the roots of the Day of the Dead celebrated in contemporary Mexico and among those of Mexican heritage in the United States and around the world go back some 3,000 years to the rituals honoring the dead in pre-Columbian Mesoamerica, the Aztecs and other Nahua people living in what is now central Mexico held a uh, uh, silical, silical uh, view of the universe and saw dead as an integral, ever-present part of life. So our people over here was doing much evil. That's why the Lord brought judgment on the northern kingdom for the wickedness they was doing so let's go to a couple of scriptures real quick let's go to deuteronomy because it's, it, it, it's, it's going into celebrating the dead okay celebrating the dead uh we'll get into the origin of trick-or-treating and so on and so forth here soon um but i want to deal with the, the the dead part real quick um deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 10 all right deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 10 
It says, there should not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. So, of course, we know that was going into Molech when we would sacrifice our kids, uh, human sacrifice. I think it was uh, at Tophiel. I can't remember the exact spot uh, where it was, um, but there's a uh, it was a certain area where Israelites would go with other with other uh, nations that we would sacrifice our children there. OK, so that's the same thing you're doing now when you dress your child up in a warlock or a, go or a goblin or a vampire or whatever the case may be. You're doing the same exact thing. You, you're sacrificing your child. Right. You're causing your child to go through the fire spiritually because the most high going to judge them as they get older and they continuing to keep this uh, pagan festival that was given to us by our oppressors. OK, so it says Deuteronomy 18 and 10. It says, there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that uses divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. So an observer of times, that's going into like your horoscopes, your, um, your zodiac sign, all those things like this. Those are an observer of times, okay? It says, or an enchanter, that's going into your, your wizards, your witches. So on and so forth. Um, I think they got a show. They had they used to have a show where they used to use enchantments. Uh, actually, that's so Raven, right? Even now, they was witches. Raven was a witch. He's seeing the future and seeing all kind of stuff like that and doing powerful things. And they make it. Um, they make our kids like these things. You understand? They make it funny, or they use an attractive face, or they put it on the on during the prime time of their favorite show times and stuff like that. And they put it on these shows. And our kids are watching this stuff. You understand? And we and our kids are being enticed by it. So the Bible is telling us we're not supposed to deal with any of that witchcraft. This stuff is real. That's why it's in the Bible. Divination, that's real. Divining, you understand? Miss Cleo, I see the future. You understand? Let me read your palm. All that stuff like that. That stuff is real in some cases. That's why the Lord told us not to do it. Israelites don't get involved with any of that. Right? Uh, it says, or a witch. Right? It says, or a charmer. You had charmed, right? Where it was all witches and stuff like that, right? Uh, it says, or a consulter with familiar spirits. That's what we just read in the Day of the Dead, right? The Day of the Dead, that's uh, 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 a consulter with familiar spirits. They're trying to conjure up the spirits of their family members, some, not somebody that's familiar to them. You understand? These, this is all sin. You understand? God tell us not to do this thing. He got it written in his law for a reason, right? And it says, or a wizard, which is a male witch, or a necromancer, that's someone that tries to bring somebody back from the dead or that's able to bring people back from the dead. The Lord said, don't do these things, Israelites. Stay far and clear away from these things. So you brothers and sisters that are new, that are confused, like, why can't I celebrate Halloween? It's, it's just for the kids. No, the Lord told us not to dress our kids up like that, not to have our kids involved in any of that witchcraft, or any of that wickedness, because it's sin. And it's going to cause our children to be put to death, right? Verse 12, and us. It says, verse 12, it says, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. So the nations was drove out from before us for keeping these same customs, doing these same things, necromancy and, and, and divination and observer of times and enchanter. Because we know who bring people back from the dead. It's the Lord, right? Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 20, I mean chapter 32, excuse me. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 39. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39. It says, see now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So the most high God is the one that's able to raise the dead. The most high God is the one that's able to... Um, you know, um, heal our people or kill our people. These these nations have nothing to do with that. These other idols, they have nothing to do with that. It still goes through our God at the end of the day. These are all idols. Sam Hain, that ain't nothing but an idol. Okay? The day of the dead, that's idolatry. Right? All these things are idolatry. All these things are not supported by the scriptures. Right? Um, let's go to the book of Isaiah real quick. I just want to touch on Halloween for a minute. It's other ones that I want to try to get into, but I want to deal with Halloween first. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. Because they make it say, oh, it's just so lovely. It's nothing but trick-or-treating. It's just about candy. It's just about this. It's just about that. No, that's not what it's about. 
is much deeper than that. And we don't know it, so we celebrate it because we've never been taught the origins of it. But now the prophet's here to teach y'all the origins of it like our, uh, our fathers taught us. So Isaiah 5 verse 20, it says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. So they call what we're doing, keeping the commandments, they say, oh, that's evil, that's legalism. But then at the same time, they go and dress their child up in a, a Superman costume or a, a, a goblin or a, go, a, 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 a gargoyle or a vampire or dress the little daughter up in a witch or whatever. And the Lord said, that's evil right there. That's, that's, that's evil. But they'll say, no, that's good. It's just for the kids. It's just trick-or-treating. It's just, uh, um, you know, making sure that they have a good time. That's all it is. All their, all their friends are doing it. We don't want to disappoint them. The Bible says, woe unto you, meaning death unto you, for calling that good or calling that evil good. In the same, in the same aspect, calling what we're doing, keeping the commandments and teaching the commandments, trying to keep the laws of God and the faith in Christ, you say that that's evil, right? The Lord, the Lord ain't, ain't with that. You understand? That's going into enchantments, going into divination, necromancing. The Lord ain't with all that, right? Go to Exodus chapter 22, verse, uh, let's go to Exodus chapter 22, and let's read verse 18, I believe. Yes, Exodus 22, we're going to read verse 18, all right? Exodus 22, verse 18, it says, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. So the Bible said you couldn't even suffer a witch to live. They weren't playing about witches during our time. This stuff is real. I know a lot of brothers and sisters be like, oh, that's just mystical. No, 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 witchcraft. Look at Esau. Esau done put witchcraft on you your whole life. You think Jesus is white. Your whole life you thought Jesus was white. So Esau know witchcraft works. Now witchcraft, he uses his television, right? He uses his television to do, to do witchcraft, to do evil against us now, to, to enchant us or to entice us, right? Um, let's go to 1 Samuel real quick, show you that this is real. 1 Samuel chapter 28, conjuring up the dead. Now that stuff, that stuff is real. We're going to start at verse 6. 1 Samuel chapter 28, we're going to read verse 6, all right? 1 Samuel 28, verse 6. It says, And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Then says Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit. Now, our forefather, King Saul, let's let's go back and backtrack a little bit. Because we're dealing, we're talking about spirits, right? Because behind these idols come spirits. I'm telling you, behind these demons come spirit. These when you celebrate these customs and you follow these holidays, it's spirits coming after you. Right? So watch this. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14. It says, 1 Samuel chapter 16, and we're going to read verse 14, all right? 1 Samuel 16 and 14. It says, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. So that the spirit of God, that righteous spirit, that Holy Spirit left Saul, right? And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. So the Lord put an evil spirit on the forefather Saul. Saul had a demon, right? So let's go back to first, I mean, first Samuel 28. So this is later in time. David is on the scene. Saul is trying to kill him. So the Lord is not answering Saul. Okay? So first Samuel um, chapter 28. We're going to read verse 7. It says, Then says Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her. And inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there was a woman that had a familiar spirit in Endor. So he wanted to go to a witch. A woman that had a familiar spirit. Someone who can conjure up the dead. Or conjure up someone that's familiar to you. Like the movie with Whoopi Goldberg. I always forget it. Uh, let me look it up real quick. I gotta look it up. Let me look it up real quick. The, the name of the movie is uh, bu, 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 bu. Uh, I forgot what the name of that movie was. Who know the name of that movie? Ghost. That's it. All praise for the most high. Thank y'all. I forgot the name of that movie. Ghost. So in the movie Ghost, that's where Whoopi Goldberg, she was able to conjure up those familiar spirits. Right? It's the same thing. Um... Verse 8, and it says, And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment 
And he went and, and two men with him and they came to the woman by night and he said, I pray thee divine unto me by the, by the familiar spirit and bring me up whom I shall name unto thee. So why did Saul disguise himself? First of all, he was the king. Second of all, the, the law said that we weren't supposed to delve into that. He knew it. That's why he, he wasn't all the way completely gone. He knew what he was doing was wrong. That's why he disguised himself, showing that he has some little, some still understanding. Okay? Um, verse 9. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul hath done, how he hath cut off all, cut off, off those that have familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Why? Because of Deuteronomy chapter 18 told us that we were supposed to do that. Anybody that was indulging in that, we were supposed to get rid of them. They were supposed to be read out of the land. Wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die, because they will be put to death for this. And Saul swear to her by the, by the Lord, saying, As the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen unto thee for this thing. Then said the woman, Who shall I bring unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. So this is real. Saul is asking this sister to bring up Samuel, meaning to conjure up the spirit of Samuel. A familiar spirit. You see these in movies all the time. What they be doing is they be talking to their, their mothers that passed, their uncles that passed, their aunts that passed. That's a real thing. You understand? And that's what we're going over right now. That's a real thing. So beware of this when you got your kids involved or you're involved in Halloween because it's not of God. You understand? It's of the devil. Okay? Um, and it says, verse 12. And the woman saw Samuel, and she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. So he was like, she was like, when she saw Samuel, she knew it was Saul was the one that was conjuring him up. She knew that she was talking to King Saul now, right? Verse 13. And the king said unto her, Be, be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. So she saw the, the dead, the souls of the Israelites descending out of the earth you understand there's some real stuff right here this is the bible so we say we believe in deuteronomy 28 68 that the curses happen to us we got to believe everything else that's written in the scriptures this is real right verse 14 and he said unto her what form is he of and she said an old man cometh up and, she, and he is covered with the mantle so saul would always wear a mantle so i mean samuel excuse me samuel would always wear a mantle so saul knew instantly oh that's samuel right there because of the mantle that he had on right and it says, uh, and Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. And Samuel said to Saul, why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? Because Samuel's body was at rest, right? Our soul was at rest. And it says, um, and it says, and Saul answered, I have sore distress for the Philistines make war against me and God has departed from me. And answer me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore, I have called thee that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. Then says Samuel, wherefore then doest thou ask of me, seeing the Lord is departed from thee and has become thine enemy. And the Lord have done to him as he spake by me, for the Lord have rent the kingdom out of thine hand and given it to thy neighbor, even to David. Because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord, nor executest the fierce wrath upon Amalek. Therefore have the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines. And tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. The Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. Then Saul fell straightway all along, all along on the earth and was so afraid because of the words of Samuel. And there was no strength in him, for he had eaten no bread all that day, all the day, and nor all the night. So our forefather uh, Saul, Samuel gave him an understanding, like, look, tomorrow you're going to die. You're going to die by the hand of the Philistines, you and your sons, and the Lord going to deliver Israel. Now, why did this happen? This happened because he conjured up this spirit. You understand? He conjured up this familiar spirit, so death had to come. But he knew the law, you understand? So the Most High allowed Saul to die, plus Saul had been going off. And it was his time. You understand? So these things are real. So don't think these things aren't real. Let's go forward. Let's go to the book of Acts real quick. The book of Acts chapter, let's read 16. Acts 16 and verse uh, 16, right? So it says, Acts 16, verse 16. 
So it says, and it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination. Let's look up the word divination because that ain't a normal Negro word. Let's see. Let's look up the word divination. Let's look it up. Let's look it up. Let's look it up. All right. Let me look it up. Let me show it to you guys. Um, all right. All right. Uh, you can see that. All praises. It says divination, the practice of seeking knowledge of the future or the unknown by supernatural means. You see this? By supernatural means. Oh, ah, prophecy. They say prophecy is that, but that's biblical. Okay. Uh, but look at this word right here. It says, let me see. It says sorcery or witchcraft. Sorcery, witchcraft. Let's see what sorcery is. Let's look at this. Let's look at sorcery real quick. Uh, okay, sorcery, sorcery. To use magic, especially black magic. You see this? To use magic, especially black magic. And look, it says at the bottom, it says witchcraft or wizardry. Now, we looked up wizardry earlier. That was in the Bible. It said we weren't supposed to suffer a witch to live, neither um, wizardry or wizard, right? So let's look up witchcraft, okay? Same thing, the practice of magic, especially black magic, the use of spells. So this is all idolatry. You understand? It ain't the, the Lord God of heaven and earth is the one that's able to cause death to come into the earth. That can heal people. You understand? That can raise up the dead. Only the most high God can do these things. So when we go in and we got our kids dressed up as a witch, saying that they can conjure up the dead or a necromancer or, or whatever the case may be, we, we trying to say that the most high God ain't the one that do that. That these spirits, these demons are the one that can do that. All right. So watch this. Um, the Acts chapter 16, verse 16 again. It said, and it came to pass as he went to prayer, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. So she made these masters a lot of money with her witchcraft. It says, the same followed Paul and, and us and cried, saying, these men are the servants of the most high God, which show unto us the way of salvation. So the sister knew Paul and them. She knew Paul and Luke and the rest of the brethren. How does she know? Because those demons can see the spirit of the Lord. You understand? Those demons can see the spirit of the Lord. I'm going to show you that in a, minute, in a minute in Acts 19. These demons know the true spirits, right? I'm going to show you that. Let's go to the book of Mark. No, let's start at Matthew. Let's go to Matthew 8. Go to Matthew chapter 8. This is about legion, right? Matthew chapter 8 and verse uh, 28. All right. Matthew chapter 8, verse 28. And when he was come to the other side into the country of the Gergesenes, there met, with, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. So everybody was afraid to pass by this way because of these men. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, the Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? So these spirits knew who Christ was. They knew Christ. They said, oh, 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 oh. What, what, what are you doing here? What, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're not supposed, you're not supposed to torment. It ain't time yet. The judgment, the final judgment of, our, of these evil spirits hadn't come yet. Why are you here to torment us before the time? They knew exactly who Christ was. Because these demons that's in our people, they know the spirit of the Lord. And they know they can't triumph the spirit of the Lord. That's why leadership always goes over scriptures that we can overcome our demons. We can overcome our sins. These demons cannot control us if we got the spirit of the Lord on us. If we fight back with the word of God. That's how we get these demons out of us. Fasting and praying and keeping other commandments. Now, let's go back to Acts real quick. Go back to Acts real quick. Matter of fact, let's go to James 2. So we got our, brother, our, our kids. Um, when we got our kids you know, involved in these pagan rituals, we taking away that spirit of the Lord. You understand? We going against the spirit of the Lord, bucking against it. Right? Uh, James chapter 2. Um, and let me look. Hold on. Let me get this off my screen. I don't like it. Okay. It's out. So James chapter 2. Um, let's just read verse 19 real quick. James 2 verse 19. It says, Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. So it says, You believe in God. You do good. He said, but those, de those devils, those evil spirits, they believe too. And they tremble 
at the name of Christ. They tremble at the spirit of Christ. That's why when this Sue said, here it is, this sister involved in all manners of witchcraft. And when she seen Paul and then she said, these the men of the most high God. These the ones that's here to lead us to salvation. Okay, go back to Acts 16. I'm going to read 16 and 17 again. Acts chapter 16, verse 16. So it says, and it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothe, saying, the same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, these men are the servants of the most high God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Because the spirits that was in her, the demons that was in her were able to recognize these the men of the Lord. And verse verse 18. And this day, excuse me, and this did she many days. But Paul being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, said to the spirit, said to the spirit. So it was an evil spirit in the system. You understand? This is a woman, but she got an evil spirit in her, just like Saul had an evil spirit in him. So it says, Paul being grieved, turned and said to the spirit. I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. So our brothers and sisters involved in this witchcraft, they're doing things like um, exorcisms. Like the Catholic Church always talk about they're doing exorcisms and stuff like that. So let's read uh, chapter 19, Acts chapter 19. So that sister had an evil spirit in her. And Paul, by the name of Christ, was able to pull that spirit up out the sister. You understand? So the spirit left her. Now she's in her right mind. Now she can keep the commandments. Because we had to have spirits, demons come out of us so we can rightfully keep the commandments as well. It's the same thing. You went under an exorcism. You understand? That demon's coming up out of you. Right? But it was spiritually through the word of God, obviously. Not no throwing no water on you and strapping you down to the bed. And you, ah, and all the demons just flying out all over the room and stuff. No, that's not the way. Okay? Uh, let's go to Acts 19 now. Um, and we're going to start at verse 11. Acts 19 and verse 11. And it says, and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought in unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirit went out of them. So only way Paul was able to do this is by the spirit of the Most High God. The Most High gave him this power. You understand? Because the power only comes from God to heal. We just read it earlier. What the Lord said, I heal, and I, I, I womb, I heal, I kill, I make a lie. Only the Most High God can do that thing, all right? So that's the reason Paul, people was able to touch Paul's handkerchief that he had on his on his person and be able to be healed from it, right? Um, verse 13 now. So watch this. It says, Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits. So these brothers got prideful after seeing what Paul was able to do. So they called people that had evil spirits over to them, had demons in them. And it says, uh, oh, it said, over them which had evil spirits. And the name of the Lord Jesus, excuse me, let me read it again. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits. The name of the Lord Jesus, saying, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. So they didn't really believe on Christ. They was trying to call these people over to try to use the name of Christ because they saw the power that our forefather Paul and them had to having the Holy Spirit on them. So they was envious of this power. Right? Verse 14. And there were seven sons of one, Sceva, a Jew, and the chief pre and of the and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? You see that? I told you. These demons know who got the spirit of the Lord on them. That's why when you see the brothers go to chant go to camp, the demons go crazy every single time. Certain areas of camp we go to, as soon as we get out the car, they cussing us out. Ready to harm us, ready to fight us. I'm telling you, every single time, you're like, why do these people don't like these particular men? What, what's the problem with these brothers? You understand? It's that spirit of Christ. It's the spirit of Christ on the brothers. And they see that spirit, and they don't like that spirit. Those demons buck against that thing. So these demons, they said, I know Paul. And we, we know Christ, and we know Paul. They said, but who are you, brothers? Y'all don't believe in Christ. I ain't keeping no commandments. We're not afraid of you. You understand? Verse uh, 16. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leapt on them. So the brother had an evil spirit on him and he leapt on them. He went crazy and overcame them. So he whooped these brothers and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. 
So when you, when you go to during Halloween, you bringing these things. You bringing these things into your household. You bringing these demons, inviting these demons into your house. And you wonder why your kids go crazy and do some Michael stuff, uh, Michael Myers stuff and kill somebody. You're like, man, why would you do something like that? We wonder why our kids grow up and they're uh, interested in witchcraft. They're interested in demonic activity. It's because we've been um, training them up in that by having them celebrate the uh, pagan festival. You understand? The celebration of Samhain. You understand? And Halloween. Right? Uh, verse 17. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many also of them which used curious arts brought their books together. So the curious arts is going into books of witchcraft. These brothers and sisters was involved in heavy witchcraft in Ephesus and all throughout Asia Minor, doing much evil during the time of the Greeks. Nothing new under the sun. The same thing they're doing back then, they're doing today. So it said they came and they confessed that they was involved in, in witchcraft and, and sorcery and wizardry and um, voodoo. Same thing. And it says, many also of them which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. So the Lord caused the word of the Most High and Christ to prevail during this time. And the brothers and sisters believed and they burned their witchcraft books because they saw there was of no power. These men couldn't even cast these demons, you understand, out of these brothers. They couldn't even cast the demons out. Acts 19, y'all. Acts chapter 19, verse 11 through 20 is what we just read. Acts 19, verse 11 through 20. So I remember one day, one day I was, one night I was studying and I came across this where it says in verse 19 and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. And I went and looked up. That's $1.5 billion today. You understand? One piece of, uh, uh, one piece of silver is like 5.5 .5 million or something like that. I came, I looked it up. And it's like, like 1.5 billion or 5.5 .5 million or something like that. A lot of money. So it was a lot of money's worth of books that they had involved in witchcraft and sorcery. You understand? Let's go to Revelation chapter 22. Let's read verse 14 and 15. Revelation 22, we're going to read verse 14. It says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So sorcery, idolatry, that's all witchcraft. That's Halloween. You understand? So let's go back real quick. I want to show you um, the origin of um, trick or treat. All right, just real quick. Uh, bu, bu, bu. let me see. Where am I at? Where am I at? Where am I at? Where am I at? Bear with me one second. I'm gonna look this up for y'all. Okay. Okay. Let's look up All Saints Day. We looked that up already. Halloween comes to America. No, history of trick or treating. Okay, I'm about to show this to you guys. All right. Let me see if I can pull all this stuff out the side. You know how it is. They got all this stuff at the bottom. Get that out of there. All right. So, history of trick or treating. Borrowing from European traditions, Americans began to dress up in costumes and go house to house asking for food or money, a practice that eventually became today's trick or treat tradition. Young women believed that on Halloween, they could divine the name or appearance of their future husband by doing tricks with yarn, apple part pairings, or mirrors. So there's some wickedness. <laughs> uh, it says in the late 1800s, there was a move in America to mold Halloween into a uh, holiday more about community and neighboring get togethers than about ghost pranks and witchcraft. At the turn of the century, Halloween parties for both children and adults became the most common way to celebrate the day. Parties focus on games, foods of the season, and festive costumes. So this is Esau. This is what he does. This is what your slave master does. He loves to, um, he loves to try and, and, and have these different things, you understand? Have people uh, involved in these different idols and idolatry and so on and so forth, right? It says, uh, 
and he shapes it and makes it seem like, oh, it's no big thing. It's just, uh, we're just celebrating Halloween. We're just getting together with family and friends and playing games and foods. It says parents were encouraged by newspapers and community leaders to take anything frightening or grotesque out of Halloween celebrations. Because of these efforts, Halloween lost most of its superstitious and religious overtones by the beginning of the 20th century. Okay, so let me make sure that I break this down correctly. Okay, so you had trick or treat, right? So you can take the trick or you can take the treat. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. Um, it just slipped my mind. When it came down to the trick, and you can go look up at look at the bishop's old uh, video that he got. Okay, uh, when it came down to the trick. Okay, basically they would come to your house and ask for a sacrifice. Okay, which you want to sacrifice someone in your house. OK, so if you refuse to do the sacrifice, then they will put the um, the pentagram on your house to and that symbolize that you didn't take the trick. You understand? So um, or that you didn't take the treat. Excuse me. So they would symbolize this. So they will come back in three days and you would have to um, burn a, a, a mound of flesh inside the, the face of a jack-o'-lantern. So they would cut out a face in the jack-o'-lantern and you would burn flesh inside of the jack-o'-lantern. Okay? And they would put that uh, pentagram on your house and that would symbolize that you didn't take the treat. You understand? So then they would come back three days later. And if you still decided not to give up your daughter, then they would take the head of the house. You understand? And uh, skin them alive. And murder them. And then sacrifices to Sam Hain for more crops. So this is all evil and witchcraft. Idolatry. You understand? I may have butchered it a little bit. But you can go and, um, like I said, you can go watch the bishop's class. Uh, the truth shall make you free. And he gives even more in-depth about Halloween. There's much evil involved in Halloween, brothers and sisters. Much evil involved in Halloween. Alright, so we're going to move past Halloween. Uh, let's move over to Thanksgiving. Okay? Let's move over to Thanksgiving. All right. Um, and we're going to try to get to Christmas if we can. OK. Um, let me see. Let me look up Thanksgiving real quick. Because uh, Esau, you see how Esau gave us a real generic uh, understanding of uh, trick or treat. It was like, oh, yeah, this is what I mean. it means. It goes way deeper than that. It goes way, it goes way deeper than that. Way deeper. Uh, give me a second. I'm going to look something up real quick. Y'all bear with me for a second. Uh, let me see. I think I might have found something. Uh, uh, let me see. I'll pray. I just want to look up something real quick. I mean, it wasn't what I wanted. Um, all right. So let's deal with um, Thanksgiving. All right. Let's deal with Thanksgiving. Um, let's look up Wikipedia first, and then we'll get deeper into it. So we're going to look up Wikipedia real quick. Uh, Thanksgiving. All right. So Thanksgiving is a national holiday um, celebrated. Sorry. Thanksgiving is a national holiday celebrated on various dates in the United States, Canada, Brazil, Grenada, St. Lucia, and Liberia. Uh, and the sub-national entities laid in Norfolk Island and Puerto Rico. It began as the day of giving thanks and sacrifice for the blessing of the harvest and of the preceding year. Similarly, named festival holidays occur in Germany and Japan. Thanksgiving is celebrated on the second day of October in Canada on the 4th Thursday of November in the United States and Brazil and around the same part of the year in other places. Although the Thanksgiving has historical roots in religious and cultural traditions, it is long celebrated as a secular holiday, um, secular holiday uh, as well. So it says the history, prayers of thanks and special Thanksgiving ceremonies are common among almost all religious after harvest and other and at other times. The Thanksgiving holiday history in North America is rooted in English traditions dating from the Protestant Reformation. The Protestant Reformation. Let's look that up. 
All right, the Reformation uh, was a major movement within Western Christianity in the 16th century Europe that posed a religious and political challenge to the Catholic Church in, in particular and papal authority arising from what, was, from what was perceived to be errors, abuses, and discrepancies by the Catholic Church. The Reformation was the start of Protestantism and the split of the Protestantism from the Roman Catholic Church. There's some good stuff right here. So let's go back real quick. So it says um, that's where during the time of these is rooted in American traditions. Thanksgiving is rooted in American traditions during the, the, the traditions dating from the Protestant Reformation. So this is not in the Bible is what it's telling you. Uh, it also has aspects of harvest festival, even though the harvest in New England occurs well before the late November date on which the modern Thanksgiving holiday is celebrated. See, it ain't got nothing to do with no harvest. <laughs> Uh, in the English tradition, days of Thanksgiving or uh, in special Thanksgiving religious services became important during the English Reformation in the reign of Henry the Henry the Eighth, and in reaction to the large number of religious holidays on the Catholic calendar. Before 1536, there were 95 church holidays plus 52 Sunday. Man, it's some evil. When people were required to attend church and forego work of and some pay sometimes pay for expensive celebrations i'm gonna skip down here it says um the holidays were to be replaced by specially called days of fasting or days in thanksgiving in response to events of puritans viewed as acts of providence so let's just squash all this right now first of all that's all bs that whole thing is bs okay the thanksgiving is the celebration of the slaughter of the native american indians let's go to the book of deuteronomy chapter 28 real quick Deuteronomy chapter 28. It has nothing to do with what they're talking about. Deuteronomy chapter 28. I'm going to read verse uh, 15 real quick. It says, Deuteronomy 28, 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So curses will happen to the Israelites if they broke God's commandments. So I'm going to skip down to verse uh, 31. It says, thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine house shall be violently taken away from before thy face, and shall not be restored to thee. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies, and thou shalt have no more to rescue them. So I will, this is going to our northern kingdom brothers, Gag, who had land and had buffalo and had oxen and had sheep on this side of the earth. And it was taken from them by what we know as so quote unquote the pilgrims you understand they came over here and they took that from our brothers and our sisters the bible prophesies it right so skip down to verse um 63 and it says let's start at 62 and it says no 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 let's start at 21 deuteronomy 28 21 it says the lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee until he have consumed thee from off the land whether thou goest to possess it so our forefathers had this land. The, all of the Americas was given to the northern kingdom of Israel. And it was taken from them when the northern king, I mean, when the, the so-called white man came over here and gave them what? Smallpox. So Thanksgiving is a celebration. They're thankful for being able to take the land from the Native American Indians. That's what it all boils down to. It has nothing to do with, oh, I'm happy. I'm thankful for what God done blessed me with. I want to have my family over. I want to eat turkey and dressing. The turkey symbolizes uh, the bodies of the Native American Indians. And the um, cranberry sauce symbolizes their blood. You understand? I think oh, the turkey symbolizes the land. That's why they pluck the feathers off. That's symbolic of them plucking off the Native American Indians. And the dressing is their guts and all that. And the, the cranberry sauce is their blood. If I ain't saying it wrong. So anyway. So they brought these things on our people. You understand? They brought this evil on our people. Let's go on to verse 62 now. Um, Deuteronomy 28, 62. It says, And ye shall be left few in number, whereas you were as the stars of heaven for a multitude. So Gad was as the stars of heaven, right? This, the Gadites, um, plug my laptop back up. The so-called Gadites, I mean the so-called Native American Indians were the Gad according to the Bible. These brothers and sisters had over 500 tribes over here, okay? 500 different tribes. They occupied this entire land, and so, and so did the other northern kingdom tribes on this side of the earth. They occupied it all, okay? Um, so it says, and you shall be left few in number, whereas you were as the stars of heaven for multitude. They killed over 77 million 
Native American Indians. You understand? Because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught. And ye shall be plucked off. See, see that word? And ye shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. How was they plucked off the land? Through those treaties. You understand? Through the death, through the pillage, the murder, the rape, and the robbery. You understand? So they used Thanksgiving as saying, oh, it was peace amongst them. They celebrating the first winter together and all that. They ain't got nothing to do with that. They was murdering these folks. They was murdering our brothers. And I got something to show you. Let's go to Isaiah real quick. Isaiah and chap chapter 65. Uh, let me look. Isaiah 65. And we're going to read verse 12. Let's start at 11. Isaiah 65 and 11. So it says, but ye are they that forsake the Lord, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that troop, that prepare a table for that troop. Hold on. Let me go. Let me go look at this. Let's see. Let's see. Prepare a table for that troop. Hmm. Let's go to Genesis chapter 49, 19 real quick. Genesis 49 verse 19. Gad. Gad. A troop shall overcome him. Now, who is that? Andrew Jackson and the F Troop, they overcame the Northern Kingdom or the Gadites, the so-called Native American Indians of Gad. So it said, Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. Gad going to win in the end, but they're going to be overcome for their disobedience and their idolatry on this side of the earth. So go back to Isaiah 65 and 11. It says, but ye are they that forsake the Lord. That forget my holy mountain. That prepare a table for that troop. So Gad prepared a table for that same troop that overcame them. Gad prepared a table for Esau. You understand? They believed in Esau. They trusted Esau. And Esau brought death and destruction and pillage and, 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 and turmoil. We don't hear that much about Gad. But when you do the research, the so-called Native American Indians are number one in the country. In uh, alcoholism, number one in the country in depression. You'll be depressed too when you see all this land was yours. Now you see white folks building up all this stuff on it, and then putting you in a reservation, basically taking the whole house and pushing you in the bathroom. Basically, you understand? That's why our brothers and sisters go through so much depression, right? So I'm gonna read it again, Isaiah 65 and 11. It says, "But ye are they that forsake the Lord, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that troop." And that furnish the drink offering unto the number, unto that number. Therefore will I number you to the sword. So the Lord says, since you did this, I'm going to kill you. You understand? And ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. So you will all bow down to the slaughter. So they was murdering us, raping us, pillaging us, hanging us up by 13s, doing much evil to our brothers. You understand? On this side of the earth. And it says, because I called, ye did not answer. Because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear but did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall be ashamed, and shall be rejoiced, but ye shall be ashamed. So our ancestors, the so-called Native American Indians, these are the things that happen unto them. Now I'm going to show you something real quick about your friendly neighborhood white man and what he did to Gad. So uh, can you all see this? Please let me know. Let me know if you guys can see this picture. You should be able to see this picture of these words I have. So, yeah, that's genocide. They killed our forefathers. Right. Okay. So, look at this. So, um, if you look on the screen right here, the underlined in this book, this book I got, Okay. So the underline right here, it says the natives being tractable and capable of morality or goodness were therefore very apt to receive the instilled principles of Catholic religion. They are not adver they are not averse to civility and good manners, being not so much decomposed by a variety of obstructions as the rest of mankind. And so much that having sucked in the first uh, very first rudiments of the Christian faith. They are so transported with zeal and fervor in the exercise of ecclesiastical sacraments and divine service that the very religious people themselves 
stand in need of the greatest and most signal patience to undergo such extreme transports. All right, hold on. Got some for you. So it's going into the conversion of Gad into uh, Christianity, right? So let me see. Hold on. All right. So watch this. Uh, it says um, above 12 million computing men, women, and children have undeservably perished. Nor do I conceive that I should deviate from the truth by saying that above 50 millions. And all paid their last debt, have all paid their last debt to nature. So our forefathers, the northern kingdom of Israel, it says this right here just says 12, above 12 million men, women, and children. And it said, I can deviate from the truth by saying that above 50 million. This is written by uh, Bartolome de la Casas. You understand? So this this is they, this is they books. This ain't got nothing to do with this. It ain't, it ain't us. Like some we just wrote this day books saying what they did to us. Right? Uh, watch this. We got another one. Hold on. Let me see. Uh, Y'all bear with me a second. Bear with me one second. Uh, here go the book right here. So if y'all can see it, that's the book. But Ptolemy de la Casas, A Brief Destruction of the Indies. And this is what they did. You understand? To our forefathers. All right? Uh, let me see. Give me a second. It was something I wanted, but I can't find it. All right. All praises, all praises, all praises. All right, all praises. So I couldn't find what I wanted. It was another picture that I had of, and it talked about how um, Esau would eat like four or five times a day. You understand? And they brought that over. That's why you see a lot of Gadites. They out of shape now. Where they was in great shape at one time. Now you see a lot of Gadites, love handles. You know, back all heavy, chubby. We learn everything from them, even how to eat from them. So when you celebrate Thanksgiving, you celebrating um, the murder of your brothers, the Native American Indians, so-called Native American Indians. Let's go to the book of um, Colossians again, because again, it, it mentioned rudiments. When we were just reading that, it mentioned that the rudiments of Catholicism. We'll go to Colossians 2 and 8 again. It said, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So Christ didn't keep no Thanksgiving. It wasn't even known of. You understand? Uh, Christ didn't keep no Halloween. It wasn't even known of back then. Even though our people was involved in idolatry back then. We weren't keeping no Thanksgiving back then. Right? And you're going to have your, 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 your mothers and your fathers. They're going to try to sucker you into coming. Saying, oh, it's just about this. It's just about what you're being thankful for. Don't be fooled by that. You understand? I'm going to show you something. Jeremiah 2.33. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 33. So they're going to try to get you to, to, to uh, you know, follow them. You understand? To come in and be amongst them. Jeremiah 2.33 though. That's what the Bible says. Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? Therefore has thou also taught the wicked one thy ways. So what happens is oftentimes because we are not built up enough in the truth or we don't, we believe but we haven't learned or we haven't researched these particular things that our mothers and our fathers would be able to pull on our heartstrings. Oh, well, you know, we used to always eat with grandma and grandma died a couple years ago. And ever since then, we done kept Thanksgiving at her house. And, you know, uh, granddaddy, daddy, granddaddy crying because, you know, he he want the whole family here. Hey, look, I love my granddaddy, but I'm not going to come over there and celebrate no idolatry and sin against God. You understand? So that, and that same thing happened on uh, on them soul food. You remember on Soul Food, they were eating out that abomination. And the, and the mama and the grandma got her legs amputated. And she died from high blood pressure and diabetes. Then they go and, and, and pay homage to her by going and eating the same food that she eating. You understand? It don't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? That's why it says, don't trim your ways to seek love. Because you want your mama and your daddy to just love you. They always going to love you. They may be mad at you because you don't come around like you used to. As far as the holidays are concerned. But they always going to love you. It is what it is. And if they do get mad. Don't love you. It is what it is. You got family. And it's truth. You understand? And this truth is about sacrifice. We got to make sacrifices. We may have to lose family members. Because we don't want to celebrate holidays. And they mad at us. It is what it is. Jeremiah chapter 2. Verse 33. It said. Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? So you trim your ways. You know God say don't do these things. But to seek love from your family. You don't want them mad at you. You'll go to the Thanksgiving dinner anyway. You go to Halloween parties anyway. You go to the Christmas dinners anyway. And the Lord said, don't do that. Why? 
It says, therefore, has thou also taught the wicked one thy ways. You're teaching the wicked ones your ways. You're teaching the wicked one that it's okay to break God's commandments, right? It's okay to keep um, Thanksgiving. You understand? It's no big deal. Doing it for the kids. That's what you're telling them. And the Lord is like, no, you can't do that. That's trimming your way to seek love. I, some of y'all are new. I guarantee you. Just wait. Give it a couple weeks, especially you with kids. Give it a couple weeks. You gonna dress? You gonna dress? Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, Sally up in a, in a, in a, in a, in a Christmas in a, in a uh, uh, a witch costume. You know, John, I bought him a thing. Your, your mom, your grandma might even grandma might even pop up with the suit. Hey, I got him a little Tony the Tiger suit for that for Halloween. He like, Mama, we don't celebrate that no more. She, what? We you always celebrate. That was one of your favorite holidays when you were a kid. You need to let them kids live. I had a family member tell me, I'm going to destroy my kids by not letting them celebrate Thanksgiving and Christmas. And I'm like, destroy them? Man, that's some crazy stuff right here. Wow. Anyway, um, let's go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 4. I want y'all to hear this. 1 Peter chapter 4. We're going to read verse 1. We're going to read down to verse 4. All right. First Peter chapter 4, verse 1 through 4. So I didn't go really in depth on Thanksgiving. I didn't really go in depth on Halloween. Um, like I said, Bishop did a class on it. He teach it way better than me. I haven't re really refreshed my memory on the trick or treat. So I may have butchered that. So don't take my word for it. Um, go and look, um, look that up just to make sure that I was correct on the trick or treat. Because that's still kind of bothering me. <laughs> it's like I have my notes in front of me. It's still kind of bothering me. Anyway. Um, let me see. Yes, we're gonna read First Peter. First Peter, uh, chapter four. Let me look at something real quick. Yes. Okay, I actually got it on my phone. Oh, praises! Make sure I wasn't wrong. Okay. Uh, Halloween. We'll go back real quick. Halloween. Hollow means holy. Ween means Eve. I got it right here in my notes. I'm tripping. Ancient Celtic god Samhain, or the Lord of the Dead, was the celebration. Celtic holiday, the honor of nature, Mother Nature, the end of autumn, the United Kingdom is the autumn's right. Mexico, All Souls Day, Day of the Dead. We went over that. The Druid priests sacrificed people to Samhain on All Souls Day. Uh, this all comes from the Roman Catholic Church, right? So, um, okay. This is what I want to refresh on. Druid priests. So I just want to go back and refresh this real quick. So the Druid priests came trick or treat. That's where it comes from. So the trick was this. They would carve a pumpkin and burn flesh inside to light it and leave it at your door. They would paint a red pentagram on your house so everyone would know you didn't accept the treat. Right? This was the trick. So they would take the uh, uh, a carve a jack-o'-lantern and put burning flesh inside of it. You understand? And put it at your door. And then paint that red pentagram on your door, on your house. To show everyone that you didn't take the treat. We're going to get to what the treat is. Right? And it says, they, they would come back at morning. And if you didn't give up your virgin daughter, they would cut off the heads of all the people of the house and sacrifice it to Sam Hain. So that's the history behind trick or treats. Now you see so-called white man Esau. Hey, you see what we read earlier. He didn't say nothing about that. He didn't say nothing about that. That's, that's what it had to do with. But according to the according to the history, and the bishop brought it out in the, in the uh, truth shall make you free. The same thing. That's what the trick was symbolized. So the trick was when they would take a jack o' lantern, carve a face in it, put a burning flesh in it, set it on fire, put it at your door, put the pentagram on your house to symbolize that you didn't take the treat. This was the trick, right? And they would come back at morning, and if you didn't give up your virgin daughter that they asked for the night before, which was their treat, right? They would cut off all the heads of everybody in the house and sacrifice it to Sam Hain, which is the Lord of the Dead, which is who they worship. This is where this pagan ritual comes from. Uh, then the treat is they would sacrifice your young virgin daughter for good crops. So if you the treat was you gave up your young virgin daughter. You understand? And that's how you would get good crops. So much evil, man. Much evil going on. Much, much evil. Right? Um, so, did we, did we, that's a little bit more in depth about Halloween. I had it written down. I didn't realize that I still had it. So, all praises for taking notes. Um, so, that's Halloween. That's the origin of that. Chores and the trick or treat. Uh, Thanksgiving, the origin of that is the, the celebration of the murder of the Native American Indians. Matter of fact, let me get that real quick before I move on from it. 
uh, Psalms chapter 55. Psalms chapter 55. And we're going to read verse 21. So, well, we're going to start at 20, okay? Psalms 55, verse 20. Sorry, I'm all over the place. Psalms 55, verse 20. Psalms chapter 55 and verse 20, okay? Psalms 55, verse 20. It says, uh, He hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He hath broken his covenant. This is going into Esau. The words of his mouth are smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. So he came with different treaties. I think he had, it was like over 500 treaties or something that he made with Gad. But he didn't, he didn't keep none of them. They were in different languages. You understand? Spanish, English, so on and so forth. He didn't keep any of those um, treaties that he made with Gad. He just basically stole the land out from under him. Because we was naive and ignorant in believing them. It says we was at peace with him, but he put forth his hands against us. Right? So it says the words of his mouth were smoother than butter. But war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. So he was, yeah, we're going to give you all this, and we're going to share this, and we'll give you guns, and we'll do this, and we'll do that for you. But at the same time, they were still in the land out from under their noses, right? Even while they were sitting at the so-called, quote-unquote, Thanksgiving dinner, you can read, um, it might be in this book that I have. Uh, let me see. It might be in this book that I have where it basically tells you that... Um, I'm not quite sure. I can't find it. It'll be too much to try to find it in the middle of class. But I'll find it again and bring it out on another class. And leadership brought it out before as well. Where they would just sit at the thing. They would just sit at the table and speak in their own language and talk about how they they could or they would bet on how they can take one of our heads off with one stroke of the axe. Much much evil these these people have done to our people, and we still celebrate their holidays. Thanksgiving is their holiday. They thankful that they took the land from us. You understand? They took the land from us. So um, now let's move on. If we got a little time, we got about 20 minutes. So I'm going to try to get through Christmas real quick, if I may. Uh, Christmas has a lot of negative connotations. Um, but let me look it up real quick. Uh, let's look up Saturnalia. Um, you guys know this. We've gone over this. Very, the leadership has gone over this many times. I'm not going to go too far in depth into it. Uh, I'm just going to go over it for our um, new brothers and sisters. Um, let's see. All right. Um, let's look up Saturnalia real quick. All right. So let me let me show you all this. Let me show you all my screen real quick. All right. That ain't my screen. That ain't my screen. Y'all bear with me. Okay. Here go my screen. <laughs> Y'all bear with me. I'm sorry. So, Saturnalia. All right. Saturnalia. Okay. The ancient Roman festival of Saturn in December, which was a period of general merrymaking and was the predecessor of Christmas. You can go, you can go on Wikipedia and find this out. <laughs> you can go on Wikipedia and find out where Saturnalia or what Christmas originated. All right. Let's go to Wikipedia now. Some people say, oh, it's user. Shut up. Uh, Saturnalia was an ancient Roman festival in honor of the god Saturn, held on the 17th, on 17th December of the Julian calendar, and later expanded with festivals through the 23rd December. The holiday was celebrated with a sacrifice at the, at the Temple of Saturn in the Roman Forum, and a public banquet followed by a private gift giving, continual praying, partying, and carnival atmosphere that overturned Roman social norms. Gambling was permitted. And masters provided table service for their slaves. Uh, slaves. Uh, I wonder who those slaves were. As it, as it was seen as, at a, as a time of liberty for both slaves and free men alike. That's why in slavery they gave us Christmas Day off. A common custom was the election of the king of Saturnalia who would give orders to people which were to be followed and preside over the merrymaking. The gifts exchanged were usually gag gifts or small fig uh, fig figurines made of wax or pottery known as sigillaria. Uh, let's skip down. Saturnalia was the Roman equivalent to the earlier Greek holiday, Cronia, which was celebrated during the Attic month of uh, Hecatobion in the late mid-summer. It held theological importance for some Romans, 
who saw it as a restoration of the ancient golden age when the world was ruled by Saturn, which that never happened. When was the hell was the world? Lord have mercy. Um, Saturnalia, I'm going to skip down. Saturnalia may have influenced some of the customs associated with later celebration in Western Europe occurring in midwinter, particularly tradition associated with Christmas. Christmas. You understand? So this is some wickedness, man. This is some evil that our people have been involved in without any understanding of where this stuff come from. You also can read in other places where the ancient Romans were uh, flaming homosexuals. You understand? So they would have brothels, homosexual activity. They would sell us as gifts. They would pass women around as gifts, men around as gifts. You understand? All these things. All right? So let's get what the Bible talks about it real quick. Jeremiah chapter 10. Start at verse 1. And then I'm going to get into the banqueting because they mentioned banqueting. I want to deal with that word. Because I was going to go to 1 Peter 4, but I'm going to come right back to that. So we read earlier where the Bible says, um, they're after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. You know what I'm saying? Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. That any man that he was talking about at that time, obviously, was the white so-called white man. So-called white man was trying to spoil us with philosophy and vain deceit. You understand? And it's twofold. Going to the scribes, Pharisees, so on and so forth as well. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1. Hear the word, hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. So that go back to what we was going over earlier about uh, observer of times and so on and so forth. It said, for the customs of the people are vain. For one cut if they tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. So this was a custom that was being kept 400 years, 600 years before Christ during the time of Jeremiah. You understand? So our, our ancestors was like, yo, listen. Jeremiah was like, listen, don't worry about that. Because the custom was, or the, the ideology behind it was, comes from Nimrod, ancient Babylon. You understand? Um, that if you didn't put gifts under the tree stump, you understand that it would grow into a tree and, and it would attack you. You understand? That's why when you read verse 5, it says, they are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They can't speak. Ain't no spirit and no Nimrod in that. They must needs be born, meaning somebody got to carry that damn tree. That's a tree that somebody brought in the house and put silver and gold on. That thing ain't alive, but that's what our people was thinking back then because of the ancient custom, right? Because that's what Ceramus said. After Nimrod died, that his soul went into this tree stump, and you know, this dead tree stump, and that if you didn't bring trees, I mean, if you didn't bring um, gifts on his 25th, on the 20th, birthday, his birthday, the 25th, that it would grow into a uh, that it would grow into a um, a tree and attack you. So our people were real deal scared of that thing. Like, oh man, we got to make sure we get it. We put the the the, the uh, put the uh, presents under the tree, right? Uh, let me see. Watch this. So let's look this up real quick. Okay. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Okay. I think I got it right here. Hold on a second. Uh, the true meaning of Christmas. I got it right here. Alright, uh hold on a second. I'm gonna show y'all something real quick. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. We're gonna just deal with one little section. One little section. Alright, I'm gonna show y'all what's on my screen. So it says, this is going into Nimrod, alright? It says, uh it said his wife mother, Ceramicus. So Ceramicus was his wife and his mother. That's some evil right there, just off the top. Who had risen to greatness on his account was not going to disappear into obscurity because of his death. Instead, she pronounced him to be a god so that she herself became a goddess. She, pronounced, she produced another son and proclaimed him to be the resurrected Nimrod. This was not difficult because she was so promiscuous. She produced many children whose father could not be identified as she was a whore. She proclaimed that she had gone down into the dead, the world of the dead, rescued Nimrod, and brought him back. Thus began the worship of Ceramicus and the child god, and the whole paraphernalia of Babylonian religious system. Okay, the Christmas tree. It seems a strange thing to do, cutting down a tree from the forest and putting it in your house, deprived of nourishment because the roots have been cut off. If I wanted to look to a, to a tree at a tree. I would go into the forest where there are thousands of them growing taller and more majestic 
which with each passing year testifying to the glory of God's creation. The Christmas tree is based on mythology that originated in Babylon. For those who do not do it in the traditional manner, the Yule log is thrown into the fire of Christmas Eve, representing death and destruction. Then on Christmas Day, there is the tree covered with de in decorations and surrounded with presents, representing new life, the resurrected Nimrod. You see that? Even Esau know. Because this Esau, this ain't ours. This Esau. And he got the scripture right there. Look, even Esau knows. So Esau got you celebrating Christmas knowing that it ain't got nothing. Look at this. It's a, it is in violation of Jeremiah. Look at that, man. That's some heavy stuff right here, man. He Edomites the devil. I'm telling you, they know. They know. And they got our people celebrating this crap. You understand? Watch this. So let's go back to the scripture now. Let's go back to the scripture. So uh, Jeremiah 10, we're going to read 3 through 5 again. Jeremiah 10, verse 3 through 5. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cut of the tree out of the forest. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They, the reason they have to fasten it is because it ain't alive. It's dead. That's why they got to fasten it so it won't fall over. You understand? Our people sick. <laughs> we were sick back then. We sick now. And it says, they are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born. Because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Because they was thinking that this thing was going to resurrect. If they didn't do it, they were, it was going to resurrect and kill them. Right? In the, in the spirit of Nimrod. And it says, neither also is it them to do good. Is it in them to do good? They can't do good or evil. It's an idol. It's a tree. It's just a tree. It's a tree. <laughs> it's a damn tree. All right? Uh, let's go to Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11. And, and while I'm looking at it up, I want to show y'all something real quick, real quick. Uh, maybe I can pull it up on YouTube. I just want to show y'all a quick little thing um, before we uh, get off. Because I got to get off soon. Because Patient Saints coming up. And I'm going to get out of the way of the mighty men. All right. Uh, birth of a nation. Slave gift. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see, y'all. Let me see. Let me see if I can find a little scene real quick. Where uh I'm trying to find a scene on Birth of a Nation where um where they gave the look the little young lady as a wedding gift to uh I can't find it. It ain't on here. I thought I had it on here. But there's a um there's a scene in Birth of a Nation where um remember Nat and his owner were at an auction and they auctioned for this sister and her remember her her uh her teeth was real messed up and she looked real bad, right? And that ended up becoming his wife, obviously. But he gave it to her, gave her to the mother, and the mother and them cleaned up, had the sister looking real good. And they brought her to the slave master's door. And that's when the slave master gave that sister to his sister, his blood sister, for her wedding gift. That was going to be her personal slave, house slave. You understand? So what we're about to read in the Bible goes exactly with that. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 10. And it says, and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them. So they rejoiced over us. The northern and southern kingdom for going into captivity. They rejoiced over us because they was able to kill us. Throw us into captivity, right? So it says, and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry. Make merry. Merry Christmas. You understand? Um, and shall send gifts one to the other because of these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. So they had a good time. Don't pass us back and forth as gifts. So we were the Christmas gifts. So now we're celebrating Christmas and we were the gifts. We were the ones that were sold back and forth and given back and forth one to another. Right? So that's why the Lord said, come out from among them and be ye separate. Some of us, we don't know what we're worshiping. You understand? We don't realize what we're worshiping. All right? So let's go to 1 Peter chapter 4. It's probably going to be my last scripture. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 1. It says, for as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. 
The reason you suffering in the flesh is because you told mama and them you ain't coming over there for no Thanksgiving. You ain't coming over there for no Christmas. You're not celebrating no Halloween. You're not doing these things. I'm not doing it. Therefore, they're angry at you. But you're suffering in the flesh because you cease from that sin. You're going through those trials because you cease from sin. When you stop sinning and try to change your life, people will always have a problem. Like this person that's on the call, that's, that's right here right now. Just always got a problem with truth. You understand? Always got a problem. Always want to manipulate our people. You understand? But we up here bringing out straight facts. You can't dispute the Bible. Okay? So you're going to go through suffering for ceasing for sin. Okay? Verse 2 now. 1 Peter 4 and 2. It says that he no longer should live the, the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. That's the lust of men. Christmas is a lust of men. All these holidays are around covetous, covetous, covetous. Making money. Uh, that's why at Thanksgiving they're making, million, they're making millions of dollars off turkeys Millions of dollars off dressing Millions of dollars off cranberry sauce Cranberry sauce don't sell no other time of year But Thanksgiving Halloween costumes don't sell away no other time of year That's why you got these pop-up shops Like Thanksgiving uh, I mean, Excuse me, uh, 4th of July Or um, uh, the New Year You understand? You got these different holidays that pop up And Esau make millions off these holidays just for that time, bro, you literally have Esau making enough money to last him and his family for the whole year of twice a year. Having a, a firework stand for 4th of July and for New Year's. And he make money for his whole family. He ain't got to do nothing the rest of the year because he know Negroes and Edomites going to go out there and buy all these fireworks and make him rich. You understand? It's the same thing when it comes to Thanksgiving. They get rich off the turkey. Same thing when it comes to Halloween. They get rich off the costumes. You understand? Same thing with Christmas. They get rich off all the gifts that you buy. You understand? It's wickedness, man. Straight wickedness. And many black folks, I'll pray to the Most High, waking up. And they're not going to be keeping Christmas this year. And I'll pray to the Most High. Esau's kingdom going to fall. He's going to go into a decay. He's going to cover it up like he ain't everything good. But he's going to go into a decay. 1 Peter 4.2 that, that, he, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. So when you come into truth, you no longer live your life to the lust of men and what men want, but to the will of God. Let's see what the will of God is. Because God got high holy days, celebrations that we're supposed to be keeping. Right? Uh, let's go to uh, Psalm 40, verse 8. Let's show you what the will of God is. The will of God. It says, I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. So God's law is supposed to be within our heart, within our mind. So we're trying to keep our mind focused on God. That's why we tell you, brothers and sisters, don't celebrate these customs. It's sin. It's the lust of men. It's not the will of God. You got to live the rest of your life to the will of God. Okay? Verse 3. Uh, 1 Peter 4 and 3. It says, For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries banquetings that's your christmas dinner your thanksgiving dinner your halloween parties you understand and what they do at the halloween parties reveling lusting excess of wine some people come some women come to a halloween uh party dressed like a prostitute booty all out breast all out just in bra and panties that's it some brothers come dressed up like a pimp magic don juan i mean i'm talking about real straight up evil and guess what they having sex that night you understand Right? So it says, uh, that's, the, that's the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lasciviousness, that song, strong sexual desire, lusts, that could be anything, excess of wine, getting drunk, reveling. This is the same thing they was doing during the time of Rome. Paul, Peter is warning our people not to do these things. Paul warned our people not to do these things. And it says, banquetings, that was those holidays or those rituals, those customs that the other nations conjured up that are not of God. And abominable idolatries. Right? Verse 4. Wherein they think it's strange. They think it's strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot speaking evil of you. Oh, man. Oh, 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 look. He reading the Bible now. He can't come see his mama on Thanksgiving. Oh, he, he reading the Bible now. He can't call his mama on Christmas. He can't come see his aunties and uncles on Christmas. He can't bring them no gifts on Christmas. You understand? Oh, oh, you can't, oh, you can't, you can't take those, you can't come and pick your little cousin up and take him trick or treat. No, you done changed. Oh, that Bible done changed you. Them brothers in purple and gold, they done changed you. Them niggas in purple done changed you. That cult. That's what they say. They speak evil of you. All you doing is trying to keep the commandments of God. That's it. 
Hey man, I'm just trying to keep God's commandments. That's it. But they like, nah, it's strange what you're doing because we don't do that. We keep the idolatrous ways of man. We keep the customs of man. We don't do what the Bible say. So it's strange to us to hear you talk about God speaks evil of that. I'm a Christian. I believe on God. You understand? God ain't going to punish me for celebrating no holidays just for the kid. Well, God, God going to destroy you and your kids. You understand? You're going to get put to death for your kids. Simple as hell. All right? So these are things that we have not learned. One more thing about Christmas, too. Let's go to Luke chapter 2. They say it's Christ's birthday, but we saw that it actually was the birthday of Nimrod. The Israelites never even celebrated birthdays when you look at our customs. But somehow they got that conjured up in their mind. So I'm going to read Luke chapter 2, verse uh, 40. Real quick. Luke chapter 2 verse 40. Just to show you about what time period Christ was born. Uh, the black Messiah himself. St. Saint, uh, Saint Luke chapter 2 and verse 40. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit. Filled with wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him. So it's talking about Jesus. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of Passover. The Passover <coughs> is at the beginning of spring. Okay. It's the introduction of spring. Right. It's the new year for the Israelites. It's when our year begins. Right. It says, and when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. So they went to Jerusalem at the custom of the feast when he was 12 years old. So when Christ was around 12, because he was born around that time, they went up into the custom of the feast. Right? He was born around the Passover. They don't say what day. Of course, we don't care what day. We just want to show that he wasn't born in no December 25th. He wasn't born in the dead of winter. You understand? So these are things that we must uh, be retaught. Um, the Bible says, um, real quick, um, use this real quick, y'all. Sirach 21, verse 2. Use this real quick, okay? Sirach 21, verse 2. Sirach 21, verse 2. It says, flee from sin as from the face of a serpent. Flee from sin. So these idolatrous holidays, flee from that. You understand? Read it again. It says, flee from sin as from the face of a serpent. For if thou comest too near it, it will bite thee. The teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion slaying the souls of men. So I brought that scripture out to say this. On these holidays, don't call your mama. Don't call your auntie. Don't call your uncles, your sister. Don't go by their house. Don't go by just to see all the cars. Oh, man. It's a whole bunch of people over there for Christmas. You're going to put a spirit on yourself and you're going to stop by. I'm telling you. Don't eat the food that they cooked for that idol. <laughs> Even though we know an idol ain't nothing. But I'm just saying, like, they got a plate. They cooked they cook the Thanksgiving turkey on Thanksgiving, and they bring you a to-go plate. Don't eat that. Don't have nothing to do with it because you're teaching them your ways. You're teaching them that it's okay to celebrate that by you eating that turkey, eating that dressing. You understand? Don't accept no Christmas gifts. Don't do none of that, y'all. That's what the scripture is telling us. Flee from sin is from the face of a serpent. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Let me read that too. Ephesians 5 and 11. Because I know it's hard sometimes. You first come in this truth, and it's hard. Because you love your mother and father, and you don't want them to think that you changed on them. I ain't give a damn. You understand? That was me, though. But you you know, everybody ain't me. You understand? Everybody ain't. Faith ain't different. I was like, I ain't doing it. Don't call me. Don't call my family. My kids ain't coming over there. I don't want to hear it. It is what it is. I was a little harsh at the beginning but i learned from that but some brothers and sisters you may have to call mom and tell her hey look i'm just calling just to let you know i won't be over for christmas i won't be over for thanksgiving you know um i know it's going to disappoint you but this is what i believe and i'm i'm not going to move i'm not going to continue to move against god and what i feel is against god according to the scriptures you might have to do it like that you may have to you know let them down easy i don't know um watch this um uh, Ephesians 5 and 11, it says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So don't have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Darkness is sin, right? Going into sin. Christmas is sin. Thanksgiving is sin. Halloween is sin. We went over a brief understanding of all that. But I, I um, advise you all to be refreshed even more. Go and look at the bishop's classes that he's done on these topics. On the truth shall make you free. You got Halloween, the orders of Halloween, the orders of Thanksgiving, and the orders of Christmas. The bishop break it down way more in depth than I ever could. You understand? Or ever, or ever will. You understand? So go and look at that. I just want to exhort my brothers and sisters during this time of year to stay strong. 
Okay, stay strong. You understand? Stand strong in the faith. Let me get that real quick in 1 Corinthians, and then I'll be done. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58. This is for you, brothers and sisters that's fighting. It says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So your labor ain't in vain in the Lord. Stand strong in the Most High. Don't cause yourself to be moved. Don't allow your family members to play on your emotions and cause you to be in sin against your God. Because on judgment day, they're not going to be standing next to you when God said, well, why are you knew that you weren't supposed to be celebrating that. Why did you continue to do it? Your mama can't pop up and say, well, Lord, if I could. No, nah, hell no. Nah. Off with your head and hooves. You understand? <laughs> All praise to the Most High. So I pray y'all got something for it. Patient Saints Radio coming up next. Let me get up off of this thing. Pray that um, uh, you all have a blessed uh, first day of the week. Stay in the spirit. Continue to pray for our leadership, bishop, deacons, captains, officers. Uh, pray for the soldiers. Pray for the, sus uh, the, the brothers, the sisters, you understand, and the children, right, that we are able to endure this captivity and continue to move on because it's a big year ahead, all right, big year ahead of us, all right, a lot of works to be done. So all praise to the most high. Join the Booster Club as well, okay? So with that, I pray you brothers and sisters are able to get something from the lesson today. With that we say shalom, most high in Christ bless.